This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1311, Three Habits That Are Costing You Hundreds of Thousands, part two, by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is a show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, with the author's permission, of course. I hope you're having a relaxing Sunday, and today's post is actually a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here, it'd be best to listen to yesterday's episode first. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Three Habits That Are Costing You Hundreds of Thousands, part two, by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. Smoking. Before you think I'm about to slam smokers, I want you to know that I don't think there's anything wrong with smoking cigarettes. I don't think it's very wise, but certainly not morally wrong. With this article, I plan to focus on the costs of smoking instead of the negative health aspects. I'm not even going to discuss the fact that 480,000 deaths every year in the US are caused by smoking, about one in five deaths annually or that on average, smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. No, I promise, I'm just going to discuss the money aspects of smoking. If you'd like to read more about the health-related issues, the CDC has some great information. Let's get into some numbers. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, the average cost for a pack of cigarettes in 2013 was $5.76, plus an average $2.25 in tax. That's a total $8.01 for an average pack of cigarettes. That was just two years ago, and no doubt the price has increased. But let's just work with those numbers and see what happens. In 2012, the average smoker went through one pack or 20 cigarettes per day. If you smoked one pack per day at $8.01 a pack, that works out to be $224.28 per month. This quickly turns into $2,691 per year. And you thought the coffee drinkers were bad. According to the CDC, every day, 3,200 people under the age of 18 smoke their first cigarette. On top of that, every day, 2,100 youth and young people who have been occasional smokers turn into daily smokers. As you can see, it's very common for people to start smoking at a young age and then continue that habit through the majority of their life. So that $2,691 spent per year on cigarettes turns into $53,827 after 20 years and $107,654 after 40 years. Again, this analysis wouldn't be complete if we didn't look at what would happen if we invested that money instead. For an 18-year-old who smokes 40 years until age 58, that money spent on cigarettes would have been worth $446,651 if invested at 6%. Did you hear that? We're talking about nearly half a million dollars spent on cigarettes. Let me remind you what I just said above. If you smoke for 40 years, it has cost you nearly half a million dollars, and yet 3,200 young people smoke their first cigarette every day. This country clearly has its priorities messed up, and this smoking epidemic needs to come to an end. If the insane health risks associated with smoking aren't enough to convince you to quit, take a look at the amount of money you're burning every time you light up that cigarette. You could retire rich if only you quit smoking. So what should you do? Quit. I know it's extremely difficult. I know it's insanely addictive. I know you've tried a hundred times, but for the sake of your life, your family, your wallet, and your future, stop smoking. There are tons of programs out there that can help you quit, but ultimately it's going to have to be a conscious decision that you make. Figure out whatever program works best for you, but you're going to have to make up your mind. There's no program in the world that can help you quit unless you're actually serious about it. So make up your mind. Take a stand for your future and put an end to this habit that is literally killing you. Eating out for lunch. This one is extremely tough, especially if everyone else at work or school loves to go out to eat. The problem is, just like smoking or coffee, the little bit spent on lunch doesn't seem to be very much at the time. 
I'm not sure about your friends and coworkers, but some guys in my office go out to eat four and five days a week. I mean, the occasional lunch out of the office isn't a big deal, but this daily cost can really add up. Let's assume that you go out to eat for lunch three days a week. I'm not sure about how it is where you live, but in Chattanooga, it's extremely difficult to eat lunch for less than $7. So three times a week at $7 each time works out to $21 per week. Now compare that to your work. How much money do you make an hour, yet you're spending $21 to eat lunch three days a week? How much longer do you have to spend at work just to make up for the cost of lunch? Let's keep going. At this rate, you'll spend $84 a month and $1,008 per year. And that's not even getting lunch every day. It's just three meals a week. Once again, if we look at what that money would do if you invested it at 6%, over 40 years, it turns into $167,285. I mean, I think I've made my point. Do you really want to spend that much money on eating just three meals a week with your coworkers? Maybe you do, and if so, that's okay. Just make sure you've considered how much it costs and work it into your budget. But for the vast majority of us who go out to eat for lunch out of habit, I think it would really do us a lot of good to consider how much it really costs. So what should you do? Brown bag it. That's right, take your lunch from home. My wife and I take our own lunch every single day. This saves us a ton of money and I can later use that to go out to eat with her. A typical lunch for me consists of a ham and cheese sandwich, a banana, and a small bag of my favorite Wild Roots Forest Berry Trail Mix. Since we get great deals on groceries at our local Sam's, this works out to be about $2.06 for that meal. Again, this is way cheaper than eating out. I would much rather spend that money going out with my wife or friends on the weekend than burning it on lunch at the office. What habits are stealing your money? I'm not saying that you should quit doing all the things you like. The main point I'm trying to get across is that you should really stop and consider how much your habits actually cost. Oftentimes, these habits are sucking more from our wallets than we think. You just listened to part two of the post titled Three Habits That Are Costing You Hundreds of Thousands by Nick True of mappedoutmoney.com. So Nick tackled a tough one there on the smoking. In many cases, when it comes to daily spending, there are often ways you can be more efficient about getting your needs met where you don't actually have to give the whole thing up, but maybe just go about it in a more resourceful way. When it comes to smoking, though, there really is no way around it. You got to give it up. But I wonder if there's a replacement for that behavior that provides similar benefits. So maybe you're smoking to take a 10-minute break from work. Could you take a 10-minute walk instead or maybe a 10-minute meditation? I'm not sure, but it might be worth a try. I definitely agree with brown bagging the lunch, though. Not only are you saving money, but you could also be saving yourself from decision fatigue and making an unhealthy choice about what to eat. I don't know about you, but in the middle of the workday, especially a stressful one, I could be more likely to chow down on some fried food versus a salad. But if I packed that salad, I remove the temptation of eating my feelings. I'm just going to eat the salad. And that's another episode and weekend for Optimal Finance Daily. Thank you for your support and for listening every day. I'll be back with more posts for you on Monday. So have a great rest of your weekend and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.